first of all, thank you for, for the inv invitation. Uh, and um, uh, I'm not used to talk about uh, for old forests or logging or Sami reindeer herding in English. Uh, so I hope uh, you will understand the terms I'm uh, using. And I uh, apologize uh, in advance my English skills uh, uh, on this matter. So uh, my name is Tina Sanila Aikio, and I'm the chair of the organization of the Sami reindeer herding districts. And uh, I'm a Skolt Sami reindeer herder myself uh, originally. Uh, I'm from uh, Sevetjärvi area, which is uh, in the northernmost part of uh, Inari municipality. But nowadays I live in uh, Inari with my uh, uh, family and my, uh, my husband is uh, Inari Sami and he's a reindeer herder also. And uh, we belong to the Mutusjärvi reindeer herding district, uh, which is uh, one of the most affected districts by the loggings here in the Sami homeland area. And now I changed the, the picture. So uh, in Finland, there are uh, 54 reindeer herding districts uh, altogether and 13 of them are situated to the Sami homeland area uh, and the Sami reindeer herding is practiced there. So you can see the yellow line. So the Sami homeland area is uh, to the north of that uh, line. And uh, uh, there is no uh, logging in every reindeer herding district in this area, but you can see the uh, the uh, marked, marked with red the districts uh, uh, where the loggings are uh, happening and uh, uh, especially near the Inari, Ivalo and Vuotso area uh, you can see in the middle of the central of the uh, Sami homeland uh, area and these uh, reindeer herding districts are called uh, uh, so-called uh, forest uh, reindeer herding districts. Um, one of the key features why we can call the Sami people uh, as uh, indigenous peoples uh, is that we have preserved our traditional way of life with our languages and cultures. Uh, we consider the Sami traditional livelihoods as a very fundamental part of our culture and existence. The traditional livelihoods are fishing, hunting, reindeer herding, gathering and Sami handicrafts. As you can hear, our traditional livelihoods create our own food system. Uh, Sami reindeer herding uh, is the most extensive uh, land user. So we use uh, uh, every corner of the Sami homeland area. Uh, reindeer herding is a cornerstone for the Sami languages uh, and culture. And it contain, contains fundamental traditional knowledge. For example, how to move from place to place in a way that saves energy and is safe. Uh, for example, how to read the signs of the nature or how to find the reindeer in a certain weather or time of the year or to uh, how to slaughter the reindeer and how to preserve the meat. Uh, Sami reindeer herding maintains place, uh, place names and uh, it has adapted to the system of reindeer herding districts which, which, uh, with its administration and legislation. But it has uh, also preserved the Sami customary law. And uh, uh, examples of that, uh, like um, uh, a certain uh, families or collectivities have uh, certain areas uh, in their use and uh, other families or these uh, uh, collectivities, uh, they, uh, they, um, uh, uh, they um, uh, respect that, that's the right word. So uh, uh, other families don't use uh, uh, other families' uh, uh, pastures or, or the areas. 
it's uh, respected. Uh, it's uh, customary law. Uh, Sami reindeer herding uh, uh, needs uh, healthy, wide and connected pastures. And uh, of course, uh, if the land and the water, waters are not healthy, uh, any, uh, nothing can, can uh, live in there. And also because we live up here in the north, so uh, uh, we need uh, more areas to, to give uh, give uh, uh, what we need so that's why we need white areas and also uh, if uh, the pastures are uh, not connected uh, so it makes uh, uh, difficulties to to the reindeer herding or other traditional livelihoods as well and uh, uh, even though one reindeer herding district might have very large area uh, so uh, uh, it should be understood that uh, this area is um, uh, divided into different uh, pastures, uh, uh, one for uh, spring when the, the calves are born, or uh, one for summer uh, grazing, or uh, one for mating in the, in the uh, autumn, or then uh, the, the winter pastures. And then we get to the point, uh, what kind of effects uh, the forestry might have. Uh, and uh, and uh, this list is not full. And uh, I, I go very uh, quickly uh, through, through some effects. So uh, uh, in the forest reindeer herding districts, uh, the old forests are very important pastures for the reindeer during the winter. Reindeer eat uh, lichen and uh, uh, beard lichen. And uh, for example, uh, usually uh, the wind drops the beard lichen uh, on the snow. So that's a very important uh, uh, species for, for the reindeer during the winter. And especially the, the spring winter, like uh, we are living now. Uh, many times the areas which are logged are also very good pastures and of course the more is logged the more important the remaining forests will become. Uh, forests, uh, um, uh, forests are different up in the north so uh, to log tree there and tree here makes it uh, clear cutting very easily. And uh, when you change the area by logging you change the whole ecosystem at the same time. Usually the area is locked during the winter. The reindeer might come to eat the beard lichen uh, from the branches. But after that, the branches and other logging residues hide the lichen on the ground and the lack of light eliminates the lichen on the ground. So uh, uh, at first uh, is, uh, is uh, good, but of course, uh, the, the, when the trees are gone, the total area is uh, changed into something else. And uh, especially uh, after, after the loggings, uh, uh, reindeer doesn't, does not find the lichen which is left because reindeer has very good smell and it can only smell that the, the branches rot. And this smell is uh, uh, in these uh, logged areas at least 15 years. So it's very long time, uh, almost two reindeer genera uh, generations uh, up approximately. That's one reason why reindeer also avoid uh, locked areas because uh, the smell is so bad. And uh, also uh, what makes me very sad is that uh, during the summer the ground dries up when the protecting trees are locked away. So, uh, so uh, the lichen also cannot survive in very dry circumstances. And it's almost impossible that uh, there will be new forest uh, in the future on such, uh, such uh, uh, places. Uh, 
Uh, in uh, winter time, uh, the composition of snow is different in locked areas uh, than in unlocked forests. We have noticed uh, that uh, noticed that the reindeer are not keen to graze locked areas uh, also for that reason. And uh, also that, that it's a wide open area, so the reindeer do not have uh, a shelter in those areas, so they avoid, uh, avoid these locked areas uh, for that reason also. And uh, if pastures are not connected to each other, it changes uh, changes the grazing of the reindeer, and that might be seen that the land is worn out in other places because everything is connected. Uh, the economical effects of the loggings to the reindeer herders are huge. The Sami people consider to own the lands and waters here in the Sami homeland area. And at the same time, the constitution of Finland protects Sami culture. And according to the Reindeer Husbandry Act, the Sami homeland area is situated to the area which is specifically intended for reindeer herding. And the land in this area may not be used in a manner that may significantly hinder reindeer herding. In the big picture, the problem is that the cum cumulative uh, effects haven't been ever considered as the locked areas have been planned and done one by one here and there. Uh, and it's not only the logging, but there are also other competitive uh, land use models uh, on the same areas, uh, uh, such as uh, tourism, car testing, military areas, gold panning, infrastructure, and so on. Uh, so the reindeer herding balance is between protecting the animals not to starve, to keep the car pr pr production steady, and the areas as in good condition as possible. And one way to adapt, uh, adapt to this situation is that we feed the reindeer as the nature conditions guide us, and that needs money not only to buy the hay, but also to buy snowmobiles, sledges and gasoline. And uh, this is not compensated. Uh, the loggings have also social effects. So if areas which belong to certain family or collectivity are logged, it's hard to keep the reindeer in that area and the reindeer would want to go to the other area which belongs to other family or even other reindeer herding district. And uh, then there will be tensions between the relationships uh, between these families or even the reindeer herding districts. And also I want to raise up that the uh, areas which are not ever going, going to be the same after, after the loggings are affecting also to the well-being of the reindeer her herders. Uh, I have heard uh, so many stories that, uh, for, uh, for example, that this uh, area was so beautiful, old forest, and uh, I don't even recognize this, uh, uh, the same place after the loggings. So uh, the uh, reindeer herders also uh, are affected uh, by these uh, loggings. And also, I think the most one of the most important things uh, uh, is the resilience and the possibility to adapt to climate change uh, uh, is threatened uh, by the loggings. So uh, uh, it's uh, it's something which is away from our resilience as Sami people. Uh, in uh, recent years, there have been uh, some good development, uh, for example, Metsähallitus, which is a state-owned forestry enterprise, which manages the forest uh, property. Uh, uh, Metsähallitus doesn't lock without a consent of Sami reindeer herding districts. So that's a very important thing, that uh, every locking is negotiated with uh, with uh, reindeer herding district. And uh, 
this is uh, quite new, maybe, maybe uh, this last uh, three years, but, uh, but this practice has been about five years uh, uh, in, in Metsähallitus. And maybe this would be very good uh, uh, improvement also outside the Sami homeland area where the reindeer herding is uh, um, uh, practiced. And also uh, Metsähallitus tries to find a ways uh, uh, of logging uh, how to improve uh, 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 the ways of logging. So, uh, so uh, uh, for example, uh, if there are some uh, uh, ways to do that, which uh, suits for the area or the, uh, or the uh, uh, forest, uh, so uh, that kind of ways are tried to improve with the district. And then uh, maybe the newest uh, thing is that uh, the private forest owners have sold their forest to the nature con conservation. And uh, that wouldn't be possible without state or especially private funds. So this is, uh, we have very many good and uh, quite large examples here up here in the uh, north uh, and especially in our area. And uh, uh, it's predicted that there will be more snow in the future and the snow will have uh, icy layers. And uh, like two years ago in the winter uh, 1920, the ground was in ice and it got moldy. Plus there was so much snow that the reindeer could not, could, uh, couldn't uh, dig up the lichen. So if our reindeer herding district uh, would have had its old forests, uh, we wouldn't have lost our 2000 reindeer during that winter. And uh, being aware of that uh, hurt, hurt it uh, very much our uh, reindeer herders in our community and uh, uh, made, uh, made uh, us very sad. And also uh, when we uh, look to the future, uh, I think that the old forests are the most important uh, feature for the Sami reindeer herders and their resilience uh, against the climate change. So uh, uh, if we can remain the, the forests uh, or do loggings in a way that do not harm the ecosystem so much, and especially uh, the reindeer uh, in the forest, so uh, that would be the, the best solution uh, at the moment. But I think my 10 minutes have gone now. So thank you very much. And uh, I hope that there were some uh, uh, information about the Sami reindeer herding and, and uh, the effects uh, of the loggings. Thank you.